Yes, we can. Okay. So I'll just well, I'll just introduce you. Um, this is Amy Dwyer Degati. Is I'm, I'm saying it right? Yes, that's fine. Degati. Yep. Uh huh. Degati, and um, she's here from University of Maryland's program Terps Exceed. Um, welcome to the transition chat. Um, hello to the Lichter family. I see you just popped on, and um, we're recording this session for um, anybody who isn't here tonight. So I will turn it over to um, Amy, and you can tell us all about your program. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to see if it works to open with a video. If it doesn't, I'll I'll just explain. Hmm. Not really working, is it? It's not. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay. It's on our website if you want. It's just a feel good. Okay, we can go to the website and we'll get that address from you. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. sorry about that. Sometimes it works on Google Meet, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Trip Succeed. Uh, Trip Succeed is a two year certificate program at the University of Maryland in College Park. Uh, it is for students with intellectual disabilities um, and students who would not be able to like apply to college and go through the typical admissions. Uh, process and then get admitted and earn a degree. Um, even we'd like to say, even in a community college, if you think that you have a student who could get an associate's degree, that is a that is a higher certification than our um, college and career study certificate. Um, so it is a non-degree program, but it does and um, culminate in the University of Maryland certificate through our Office of Extended Studies, and it includes a transcript of all their academic coursework. Um, and I'll talk about that. They can take typical courses, undergraduate courses, and are allowed to take it for audit um, or pass fail, but the majority of our students actually take it for audit. Um, but it's a little bit of a different audit. It is, they have to you know, go to every class and, go, and do all the work and take the tests and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's modifications to sort of some of their assignments but they are in that class and, and join, you know, uh, if there's team group stuff that has to occur, they are just a member of that class and they get support from peer mentors to do that, but they are taking typical courses. Um, they also participate in career development activities, um, work experiences, internships, and hopefully paid jobs before they exit. And then we help them to find a, a, a job after they graduate. Um, it's the goal, obviously, as any college student is to get a better job um, after you go to college than you would have if you didn't go to college. And so that's really our goal. Um, so here who we are, there's sort of our staff up on the upper left with some professors. And this happens to be a picture of our current Trip Succeed students and a bunch of the mentors. We do a little meet and greet um, in the summer before they start. And um, all except one of our students was able to come to this. Um, so it's just a kind of a fun picture. And that's a bunch of our mentors as well. Uh, so the, sort of the history of Terp Succeed, as I'm sure you guys know, there was a gap of service in Maryland. There were really no options for students who wanted to completely exit their school system and then go on to college. I know there's a lot of our those programs for students who are 18 to 21 and still in school and go on to the community college. This is for those students who exit and then go on to college. Um, so we had a lot of families saying, you know, where are options? If we want to go somewhere, we have to go out of state, which is expensive. So, you know, Delaware, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia all had programs and we did not Maryland. So um, I was at University of Maryland on other projects and sort of just capitalized on the momentum of that diversity, equity and inclusion movement um, and mentioned that disability is often left off of that. And uh, our dean in the College of Ed agreed and helped me start it. She is now the provost, which is really handy for us. Um, so we needed financial support. So we've been getting a lot of support from state agencies, the DD Council, DDA, um, et cetera. We were just persistent on this until we got some launching money and some continuing support from there. So that's sort of how, how we started. Because there have been programs like this around for you know, 10, 15 years around the country. We just did not have the option in Maryland. So who is Terp Succeed for? We are looking for students um, 18 to 26 at the start of, a pro of the program with an intellectual disability. Um, I will say 18 tends to be really young. We really want to encourage students to stay in their school if they're, particularly if they're getting you know, the certificate of completion, which the majority of our students are, 
um, to really take advantage of all the programming in your school until you have to exit. So the majority of our students are actually, you know, start at 21, 22, 23, 24, um, and they seem to have more work experience and a little bit more experience away from home. And that seems to be a good fit. So um, they have to be willing to and capable of attending and completing um, classes. So this is an academic program. So if it, it's not just a social program by any means. They have full course loads for the four semesters that they are here. Um, we are looking for students who have had some sort of work experience, doesn't need to be paid, but have had some sort of idea of what it's like to go to work because they uh, the students We'll do a career exploration course in the Career Center um, in the fall, and the three semesters after that, they will have internships um, on campus or off campus. Um, has some experience with their show's ability for independent living, you know, has gone away for camp, um, is able to get themselves up in the morning um, and, and get out the door, you know, with some supports a little bit, but we have students who live on campus and we do not have 24-7 support. We have you know, over a hundred mentors, it's really fabulous, who are getting trained on campus through a special course, um, a three credit course, but we cannot guarantee 24 seven assistance. Um, are all the students living on campus? Is that a requirement? It is not a requirement, but all 10 are. We did have one student the first year who commuted and by the end of that first year was like, that's it, I'm living on campus. And so uh, the second year he did move on to, to campus. Um, so it is not required, just like any student goes to University of Maryland, um, but we really encourage it because really a lot of those just community skills, independent living skills, teamwork, a lot of that stuff happens in the evenings and at night. They all, they join, you know, rec sports leagues with mentors and they play those games like 10 or 11 o'clock at night over at the Xfinity Center Fields or something like, that. you know, they have a lot that goes on. There's a lot of activities and there's you know, games and uh, sporting events um, and all sorts of stuff that goes on at Stamp. So, uh, and we run tutoring sessions with the mentors four nights a week in the dorms where they, um, they're they scattered across a couple different dorms um, from 7 to 9 p.m. So uh, those are important as well. And I think they're just much more easy to, act, easy to access when you live on campus. Um, they have access to and know how to use a cell phone to communicate because that is how a college student gets through life. <laughs> Lots of texting and group me and chats for the, for the, um, even for their classes uh, and just for us to be able to figure out, you know, hey, where are you? we get a lot of, oh gosh, I'm lost right now. <laughs> and that's okay. We teach them all how to drop a pin and we can come find you or we can guide you through, you know, where you are. The, the campus is big students can learn it pretty quickly, but it's also under a ridiculous amount of construction right now. So sometimes the Google Maps are confused because they don't move as fastly as quickly as the uh, the construction moves. It's ridiculous. So um, we are looking for people who want to attend a large university. We have 40,000 students. Um, and so you have to want to to be around that many people. Um, there's lots of, there's over 700 clubs. You want to take advantage of that. Um, there's big sports. There's a lot going on. And for some people, that's that's not a great match. Um, so we want to keep in mind. And another reason why we feel like we need to expand these across the state so that there are some smaller schools that host a program like this um, as well for those who just feel more comfortable in a smaller setting. Um, everyone has to exhibit the appropriate behavior for a college, college campus setting. They are students, uh, they have IDs, they are paying tuition, room and board with, with support. I will talk about that later. Um, so they are held to the UMD student, student code of conduct in all areas. Um, yeah, and there's, at the top of the application, there's a little list of eligibility criteria or suggestions. Um, and again, that application can be found on our website. So our focus areas are career exploration and development, really focused on, on the jobs. We're doing lots of exploration, um, lots of connections to the Career Center, and like I said, internships, uh, three out of the four semesters. Um, also the college success, the of course access. So students are taking, they're gonna pick a course of study that's related to their interest area. Um, we have students who, for instance, really, um, 
love sports and activities. They take a lot of kinesiology courses. And then their career exploration, they're going to be take, doing internships um, somehow in a sporting event. We have one young man who is working with the athletic trainers for all of club sports and gets to work in the physical therapy area and gets to go on the sidelines uh, during games of various sports to be there if they need to, you know, st you know tape somebody up clean up some blood, all that kind of stuff. He's on the sidelines with them, which is really exciting. We've had students really interested in um, theater. We take a lot of, we get permission from them to take a ton of theater courses. And then he performed in a musical theater club on campus every semester. He was on the men's chorus. And then he was actually hired once he graduated at our Clarice Performing Arts Center. Um, so we still see him on campus every now and then. So those are just, we try to align the course of study with their career interest. And then what, what really keeps this all fully inclusive is we have trained peer mentors. So they take um, a course, a three credit gen ed course. So we get students in 30 different majors in a course. We just increased it this semester to 75 people because there was such a long wait list. And these students, it is a course that also has a lot of field work attached to it, which is the direct support to students. Um, so every semester we now, um, host this course for, it used to be for 50 students, now it's 75. And then students can continue on as lead peer mentors. They take another, they get another certification. They, they're getting certified to the College Reading and Learning Association. Um, and then they can stick with us. So we have, you know, students who have been with us for four or five semesters and are still great peer mentors and they oversee the other peer mentors. So it's a great network. Um, and that's what really makes it inclusive because frankly, students don't want me or you know my associate director or the liaison we look like a bunch of moms nobody wants to go to class with mom nobody wants to go to a sporting event with mom <laughs> so it's really key that they are just going with other college students um and are we're the peer paid they uh no the the ones in the course are not paid they're getting credit for the mm -hmm. course um the lead peer mentors they get paid for taking an evening seminar because they don't get credit for that but not for their hours. Um, and then if they continue on and they're doing any sort of management project or project with Trips Seed, they get paid for that part of it, just in a, a small stipend, but they don't get paid for the support, like for the one-on-one -on -one support that they provide at all. Um, they just love it. We have a lot of core mentors who just absolutely love it and tell, it is, tell us it's the favorite part of their college career. It's really been a surprise, lovely bonus to the whole program is that we really reach out across the campus. Um, and and they're all coming over to the College of Ed and all supporting these students. And they may not have. We've had mentors who have changed their their career path because of Trip Succeed, which is really exciting as well. Um, so it's really great. They just, they really manage to, they know what it's like to be a student at University of Maryland more than we do. So, you know, they work with them. They're they're out at, you know, events. There's some stuff where like, you know what? We don't even need to know <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> um, so they're just like other college students that really help support them. And they, they're, they're eyes on them too. If they're recognizing something is, you know, we've had mentors say, ah, I think so-and-so, you know, there's some stuff on his Instagram account. I think he's being catfish, you know, and we go ahead and sure enough, you know, that stuff happens to any student happening to one of ours. Our mentors, you know, caught that and shut it down. Um, so they're really with them and can see some of the stuff that we would never have eyes on, you know, so which is really great. Um, some of the components, again, it's a certificate program. They're enrolled through the Office of Extended Studies, kind of went over a lot of this. They have work-based learning experiences and internships. They have access to all the clubs and activities. So we're, we part of... Um, our goal for, for receiving the certificate is social engagement on campus. Um, so we really encourage, we want them to at least be in one club. Some of them are in three or four, um, which is exciting. Uh, they do on-campus housing and dining. That's available. So they all have dining plans. Um, we have the really strong peer mentoring program and they have access to all the, they will go through the typical freshman orientation, which is an overnight in the summer that every single freshman has to do um incoming freshmen and we just have peer mentor support for that 
they have access to all facilities. They do all sports lotteries. They can have access to, you know, the, the uh, lotteries for football games and basketball games um, as well. So this is a little bit about our career exploration and development. We are housed. Also, we have a, um, an employment, a career specialist who is actually funded through DOORS, Division of Rehab Services, because all of our students have open full VR cases. Um, so she comes from an agency and she is on campus three days a week, teaches the, the career course and manages all of the internships all through the career center. Um, so, so then we have that support as well. Um, that what agency is she from? from? She is from OBI, uh -huh. Opportunity Builders, Inc. Mm -hmm. Get Mar Marsha Legg. Um, moved over to OBI. That's who um, that's who we're working with. So the peer mentors, I talked a little bit about this. They are learning new practices. They, um, like I said, they are getting a certificate from the College Reading and Learning Association. Um, so we have topics that have been um, approved, you know, through them that we then teach and are very specific to TRIP Succeed. They do lots of um, planning and weekly logs, and they do a lot of brainstorming um, together as groups about strategies for how to work with particular students, students who are struggling this, you know, in one area, something that comes up, how to manage. Um, so it's their, they become a very tight cohort and they work together very, very closely, um, which is great. So we see them twice a week in their, in their class. My associate director teaches the class and we have all former mentors as TAs, which is great as well. Um, we do very individualized goal setting and tracking, um, which is also monitored through those peer mentors who work with them directly. We do special trainings with the RAs in the dorms where they end up getting assigned, um, just so they're aware of TRIPS succeed and know who to contact. Um, and really RAs and the, the resident directors for those are incredibly well-trained. And, and we've had all sorts of anything that you think a freshman might get themselves into it has happened <laughs> or i shouldn't say that because i'm sure there's stuff that hasn't and it will um but it all goes to the ras work with them just like they do any other freshman and just um we send in metros or we go in to help support any of that we have an academic liaison who meets with every um professor once the students register and um, so they're fully aware. We have some modules for them on what it's like to provide accommodations or to have students with intellectual disabilities in their classes, um, work on modifications and just keep the communication open. And we have had no one say no or have a problem at all. Um, so that's been really lovely. Um, and then we do, there's a lot of peer mentor coordination and collaboration to provide all the supports um, for their assignments or tests in the classroom, on the job, social and communication. But again, we do not provide 24 seven support. Um, do you work with the disability support services? Um, yes, people they all, yeah. yes, absolutely. I was just about to say, they all register with ADS, Accessibility mm -hmm. and Disability Services. Um, and that's our academic coordinator help so that we have one counselor in particular who works with all of our students just to coordinate that. Um, and then we do, you know, whatever accommodations they get, they're incorporated. They get, you know, note taking, some do, some um, get, you know, take their tests in a separate area where it's quiet. They get time and a half, whatever is needed, which we look at IEPs and, and psychologicals when they come through for um, the application purpose and um, have them register and use all that for their accommodations. Um, here's an example of just how we, this was an, an older one when we had um, the six students. Now this is even a bigger rainbow page, but this is sort of how things are scheduled throughout their day. So they have courses and then um, mentors who sign up. So they have the person and then an, in the one column and then in the lighter column is where the support sign up. And those are all the peer mentors. And they actually, during our you know peer mentoring class, that's pulled up and made sure that things are covering and they share with each other, oh, the last time I supported you know, Ben, this was a struggle, so we did this, or the professor mentioned this, so make sure when you support him, you know, so there's lots of exchange um, and handoff so that everybody's pretty informed. Um, but this, there's one for every single day of the week, every week of the semester. There's a different rainbow calendar and all the students can access it. Um, we do have a peer advocate who works in that peer mentoring class. 
who um, Adrian over on the right, who he's a staff member. He went through the George Mason program years ago. We didn't have one in Maryland. And so he does a lot of the training of the mentors and works with the, stu um, the students on special projects when needed. Um, so that the, the timeline. So right now we release the application always on December 1st. It closes February 1st and decisions are made by April 1st. Um, there might be additional student and family interviews. If we need more information, we do ask that students send in a video sort of of certain questions that they're responding to. Um, then if they're, they're going to live on campus, the housing submissions are in by May 1st, like any other um, incoming freshman. The fees are typical UMD tuition room and board. We have an additional program fee um, that's currently $37.50 per semester um, for this school year. And we are getting the status of comprehensive transition programs so that students can get financial aid. But we have also um, worked with doors so that those students who are eligible as of this summer, they made a change, they are um, they're paying tuition room and board for eligible students, which is huge. Um, and then DDA, if students um, have self-directed waiver funds, that extra support fee can go into their budget and that support fee gets paid. So we have, we're finding ways where it is now very reasonable for eligible students to have this funded through our agencies. Um, That's fantastic. Which is really great. Yeah. So you just said doors pays room and board for eligible? Tuition, room and board. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that is a, that is new as if there were new regulations that came down and Maryland, um, probably because we've been working closely with Terp Succeed, they had a very open interpretation to that. And yes, I think almost all of our students this past two semesters have been covered tuition, room and board by DOORS. And we work very closely with the DOORS counselors and their DDA case managers. And we try to have meetings annually and even more if need be with both present with DOORS and DDA so that they can work out you know, how they're going to do handoff and stuff together on those meetings. Um, and that has, that's worked, that's worked pretty well for everyone to be in on the planning together. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's, yeah. It is wonderful. It makes me wonder, you may not know the answer to this, it's kind of outside the scope of what you do, but do you think that doors pays room and board for other eligible clients who aren't in Terps' seat, who are just, you know, uh, I think that there, yeah, I think it's an individual case, but yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. I, in fact, I think they had more of a struggle with Terp Succeed because they are not getting a degree. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. But we are, um, the Higher Ed Act recognizes programs such as, such as ours as an academic um, program. Yeah. And yeah. so because of that, Doors is now saying, yes, we will pay for this as well. If we're career focused and we are. So um, here are just some college success, some things that, you know, pictures of folks there. That's the, the president, Dr. Pines. He um, actually, this, this year, he reached out to us before the beginning of school and said, can all of your students and mentors and staff meet at Stamp Union in front of the, you know, the college ice cream store at noon? And he came and hung out with us for like a half hour, talking to the new students, talking to the mentors and giving everybody free ice cream. So he specifically reached out. So he is a big fan of Trip Succeed, which is lovely. Um, and here's, yeah, some of the new, and there he is. You can see, he always finds us. There's, there he is with a couple of our students. Um, so this is just pictures of them at, at various events, all mixed in with mentors. So it's really fun. Lots of good sporting events. And what was nice to hear this year, so classes start on Wednesday. You can move in as early as Sunday. And eight of our 10 students moved back on campus like th within an hour of when it opened. <laughs> they were like, I'm ready. I got to go back to campus, mom. <laughs> so they didn't even start classes to Wednesday. They've been here since yesterday. It, a lot of them went early because there was a noon basketball game. So they all arrived went to the basketball game, went out with a bunch of mentors to dinner, and then came and unpacked their rooms. So 
they all wanted to be back, which is always lovely to hear. So um, there is websites, information. Um, and if you go onto the website, which is really that um, that second link there, the it's the um, IHE hub, umd.org slash trip succeed. Um, that will have all sorts of, yeah, there's, there's news clips that, of our graduation. There's articles about us. And there's that video that didn't run. <laughs> um, it's all there. And all currently all the application materials are on there until um, they come down February 2nd until next, until next year's, until they open again in December. Um, but there's lots of information on the website. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So do you cap it at 10? Um, no, we've just been slowly rising. So this year we're going to graduate four and probably take six new. So we'll have 12 on campus next year. Okay. And how many people apply versus how many people are accepted oh, in general. Terrible. We so far we have 20 applicants. Last year we had about 27 for six slots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> I hate that. Um, but we don't, you know, we don't have a lot of um we're still trying to secure long-term funding. Mm -hmm. You know, and as soon as we can, as soon as we can do that and get that more established, um, because right now I'm part-time on it. Mm -hmm. on paper. <laughs> so is my yeah. assistant. So uh, we have the equivalent about a 1.2 full-time staff. Oh gosh. We run this. So we run, I mean, it's on paper. It takes much more than that. I'm sure. They each get individualized, very customized services. Um, so, you know, we're just working on the full sustainability of that. And the college is, you know, looking at feasibility and we're looking at, you know, going to the state legislature and getting some federal money that goes to colleges that want to do this. Um, so, and our goal is to also, there tends to be every five years, a big grant through the Department of Education, the TIPSIDs, the transition programs for students with intellectual disabilities at college. And if it runs again in 2025, we're going to apply for that in order to replicate our programming across other colleges in Maryland, other AHEs, because it should be you know, it should probably be up in Garrett County. It should be on the Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. It should be, mm -hmm. you know, it should be Towson. It should be everywhere, you know. <laughs> so that's our goal is that to really partner and try to replicate, you know, right. with TA, this type of programming. So UMBC formerly had something similar that it shut did. down. Was it the same exact thing or just something similar? Um, it was similar. I didn't really know much about it, but I mm -hmm. do know that it wasn't, fully embedded. Like, I don't think parents paid tuition, room and board. I don't think, yeah. you know, and I think it was temporarily funded by DDA. Like they were paying all the tuition, room and board and th that can't be sustained. Wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what happened was it just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the full background, but I know it was devastating that we had one and then it left, you know, and then it was gone. Yeah. So yeah. Not want that to happen again. Right. And there's something um, at COP and also that it's a little different, but it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it is a little bit different, but there is there is an option at COP as well. Right. But yeah, it would be great to see it all over um, the state. Yes. Early. Yeah. So good luck with that um, grant. I'm hoping that works out for you. Oh, thank you. Well, so because it's very selective, what mm -hmm. are some things that make an application stand out? Um, I think, you know, we're we are looking for students that really are eager about wanting to go to college and understand the academic side of it and have shown some um, level of independence. You know, so we've had okay. students who, yeah, yeah, you know, I went and, and I do a summer camp away from mom and dad, you know, um, They've they've shown that 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 has worked for them. Um, they've had some job ex some work experience, um, and and just to show a, as well you know family understanding that college is a little bit different than high school, and they're okay with the there's going to be that separation, and you're not going to know everything you know um, because it's it's a college environment. It's very different. Um, so we're just looking for those who who show 
that that's what they want, you know, a college experience and that they've had some evidence to show that they could handle that level of independence. So it is, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's hard. I don't, I don't like, I mean, with that percentage rate, it's like we're the, the Harvard of post sec programs and I really hate that. Um, but, you know, we're trying to grow it slowly so that it can be sustainable from the campus side as well. Cause you know, every year we're learning new things, you know, new situations come up and building new systems and partnering with new, um, with new departments on campus, um, that, which has been wonderful. Nobody has ever said no. I mean, res life is great. I work with them they place them in different, you know, kind of hand place them in the nicest dorms on campus. Not going to lie. They get really lucky. Um, so everyone's the dining hall managers have been great. They know all the students and they let in the peer mentors who don't have dining plans because they're upperclassmen, but they want to go in and that's part of sort of their socialization. So they work with us on that. Uh, the, I mean, we've had, we've had a student who this year was the, actually started last year and carried it off this year um, as a student manager in the equipment department of the football team. Coach knows him by name, Coach Lotsley, and he traveled to every away game and went to the bowl game. Wow. Um, and we've had football players as a result um, as peer mentors. So if anybody's a Maryland fan and you know Roman Henby, our number 24 leading running back, he was a peer mentor. This last year, came to class all the time, had lunch with two guys twice a week who didn't know a thing or care anything about football. <laughs> It was refreshing, it. right? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I love it. So yeah. um, he was lovely. So we have football players. We really partner with the football team. They send, and that's really great to have those guys as mentors because you walk through stamp with them and everybody knows you're a football player mm -hmm. and they're hanging out with yeah. our guys. It's great. That's good. That's right. good. So um, are the uh, jobs, they, they tend to be off campus and well, what do you do about transportation? Um, most of them have been actually on campus. Okay. Um, there's just so many different departments. We have uh, one young man who works at the hotel, which is just off campus, but he's just walking across the street. So that hasn't been a problem. Um, there are certainly buses. There are buses that can get you from campus into Rockville and Silver Spring and that whole area if need be. Um, but we've been able to you know, a lot of them will want to really be on campus because they're doing so much stuff. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's kind of great. And you, usually we can, we've been able to find all sorts of really interesting things in, in IT. And and typically what we've been so far, all of our students in their final semester, some even sooner than that, are actually paid student workers. So, um, which is really great. A lot of them work at the, the big sports center or um, work, and sometimes they do an internship in one area and get a paid job on campus. That's been working too. Mm -hmm. um, so we're all over health health center, the theater, performing arts center was paying, um, all, all sorts of interesting things. So we just go with, we don't have set slots or anything. It's whatever a student wants. We just develop and then we go, okay, we're going to go knock on their door, <laughs> find out what jobs there are. And so every year we have more doors open because we have more students with different interests, so. And what's your gender breakdown? Right now we have 10 guys. Uh-huh, that's what I thought, I was looking at the picture yes. of a lady. But. No, nope, yeah. it's 10 guys. Um, and it is not because we don't want, we have had very few female applicants. Mm -hmm. And this year we're noting that we have a few more. So I think this is probably the year but we would, out of those 26 applications last year, we had three that were female and two that were really young and one that still needed to work on stuff. Like the rest were just all men. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if it's the double vulnerable population or it's a little scary mm -hmm. to go to school to send your mm -hmm. girl out. But uh, I think, um, I think with all the mentors and the built up programming, I think families are a little more comfortable. So we do, we have at least eight or nine I'm seeing in our application pool so far. So that's exciting. Yeah. We're like, everyone is like, yeah, got some girls. <laughs> okay. um, I would invite anybody who has questions or comments just to unmute. Um, we don't have to be formal because we're a small group tonight. Um, so please go right ahead and ask Amy your questions. 
So I don't have any questions and this is very informative. So I really do appreciate what you're sharing. Um, and it's helpful to know that this is out there for students. I'm just worried that my own son is not, you know, has not been academically challenged at all. So I worry that, you know, if I apply, he'll be denied and then, you know, that'll be another like downfall for him. So that's just my concern. But I think he'd really appreciate going to college. <laughs> well, yeah. And again, students are auditing the courses. So, I mean, if it's something that they're really interested in, college is very different from high school. Um, and we we modify, we work with um, professors. So sometimes there's like, there's a 10 page paper, but one of our students, if he can just write a page with a lot of help from a, you know, a peer mentor, that's fine. And yeah, that's we're, not, we're not even there. That's, that's my, that's my concern. Academics mm -hmm. has been, we have been, we have not been serviced well academically. <laughs> so that's my fear. But socially, okay. I think this would be great for my son. Mm -hmm. um, so is there any you. sort of testing that uh, academic uh, test to get in like reading level or anything like that? Well, we look at basic reading level. So we say, you know, looking roughly at second, third grade level, at least to, because there, there is, there is academic, there's going to have to be a little bit of reading um, and there's test taking and, you know, so there's some basic reading um, math. We're not so worried about. Um, we typically don't take the courses where there's some sort of math requirement. Um, Cause I would avoid them myself too. Um, so yeah, um, so math or not, so it, it it's it's a little more the a little level of reading and writing. Of course, they every everyone has to take a public speaking class, for instance, every freshman, not just our students. So they take that class as well and have to be able to, you know, it may not be a 10 minute speech. It might be a two minute speech at the end, but they have to, you know, in their own way at some point, be able to stand up and give a speech that they've written. Again, a lot of help from a from peer mentors to write that, but that is a requirement for that class. And so they have to do that along with everyone else. So there wouldn't be a requirement to take, for instance, uh, a literature class if the person was really interested in art and they just wanted to audit the art. Right, oh yeah, we have a student right now. He took Studio Art One and his second special, he'll take Studio Art Two. Okay. And it's mostly, yeah, it's a drawing, <laughs> you know, sketching and drawing, so yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, we have a lot of students who come in and say they really are interested in hospitality. There's no hospitality program at University of Maryland, but we try to connect them with courses that, you know, some business management courses that talk about customer service or some, you know, psychology courses that, that talk about how people think and then maybe a marketing course. So we try to connect courses that we do have that seem logical um for someone but you know there are thousands and thousands of classes there it's really you, we can we can find interesting stuff for everyone and relate it to a course of study so far we've been able to that's great anybody else have questions or comments i want to come down and visit if i could sometime oh absolutely just let us know and we do do every November to the first or second um, week in November, we do an open house for oh. families mm -hmm. um, and and we do it in the career center and it's sort of split up. So there's a, a, a like a presentation and FAQ session. And then you go on a tour that's given by the students and mentors. And then we and then we swap. So we do everything twice so that you can um, you can get both aspects. You have your questions answered, um, and then you also get a sort of a tour of campus. And this, the students every year, they plan the tour to point out what they think is important um, to everybody, and then they run it with mentors. So that is every November. That goes up on our website, usually in October with the exact date, and then registration. Because we've, yeah, we had over 67 families in November. Nice come to that so it, it gets it gets crowded <laughs> um do you remember what day of the week it's on is it change around it changes around each year um mm -hmm. it tends to be this one i think was on a wednesday maybe okay um so i'll look for it next in year. The and it's in the it's like the after school kind of time so it's in it's in the evening it, we tend to start it at four because 
in the parking garage very near the career center parking becomes free at four right. <laughs> parking is key on campus so but it's so it's after school so if, you know students are in school still they're usually done by then they can come to an open house okay well thank you so much for coming here and sharing your information um all the families should know that um, the recording and the PowerPoint will be posted on um, the resources page. Um, as soon as the tech person can get it, I'll send it to them tonight. And um, so you can review it or refer friends to it, um, however you want to do it. And I won't keep anybody here later than we have to. I appreciate so much for being here with us today. Thank you Thank so much you. for listening. Thank you, Amy. We appreciate your time. No problem. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.